Today, I'm meeting Paulette Pelosi, a Welsh Italian who lived at Dilwyn Cafe on Dilwyn Street during the 60s and has plenty to share about Swansea City's past. I asked her about her Italian heritage and what it was like growing up in 60s Swansea. Thank you so much for speaking with me today, Paulette. I really do appreciate it. I guess a really good place to start is, what was it like living at Dilwyn Cafe? And what was the link between Italians who migrated to Wales? Well, the Dilwyn Cafe that I grew up in from 1959 um, originally was named after my father's family, the Pelosi's. So that would appear on any of the publicity material in the trade directories, on paper bags. But of course, once Mussolini brought Italy into the war against Britain, then it was suggested, highly implied, that the Italians or anyone with links to the Italians, if they had an Italian name to their shop, should take the sign down and replace it. Often with, I think, in our case in Swansea, with the name of the street. So the, the Pelosi's Cafe was in Dilwyn Street, it became the Dilwyn Cafe. There were the Rossi family in Union Street, their cafe became the Union Cafe. Um, very English slant on things. What is your Italian connection? Our cafe was, would have been called an Italian cafe because the people of Swansea would have known, obviously, that there was a, an Italian background to my father opening the shop. His brother had had the shop, the cafe, before him. My father's parents came to Wales in 1907. My grandmother was um, you know, 20, my grandfather was 25. Uh, she was Maria Carmela Di Marco. He was Giuseppe Pelosi. And um, they got married in 1907 in Piccinisco in central Italy. And uh, they had heard in, in that time of this place called Wales, where coal was king and you could make a good living. So they came over and they came initially to Astrid and the Ronda, um, where they stayed with, I believe, another couple who had come from their part of central Italy before them. Um, and then he, my grandfather was working in, in the mine, the local mine, and I believe he had an accident. And I certainly think he wouldn't have found the life very suitable working underground when he'd come from a beautiful area with 48 acres of land and vines and figs and everything. So by January 1908, my um, aunt was born, Angelina, and later on that year, they, my grandparents came to Swansea where they opened all their businesses. And um, one of the first shops was 9 Dilwyn Street, the Dilwyn Cafe, where I was brought up. My uh, parents, my father, Mario Luigi, or Lou, and my mother, Doreen, um, they bought the cafe in 1959. Um, and uh, yeah, so my formative years, childhood, uh, going to school, starting school, everything started from life in the cafe, above and behind the shop. And on reflection, being a very old premises, was quite uh, Dickensian when I think about it. But if you were to ask me to describe what was it like, my childhood there, the many adjectives come to mind. Um, interesting, always something happening. Um, exciting in the respect that uh, we were near the Grand Theatre, so you would have um, crowds of people coming in on their way to a show, or you'd have the stars themselves. Also, on, we were near the Vetchfield, where Swansea Town, as it was, played football. Um, and so on match days, I was left to my own devices, making things and eating sweets probably while my parents were so busy because they were just, you know, a two person team. So another adjective there I would bring in that you mightn't expect is life was stressful. And, um, you know, not very long after we left there and closed the business, my parents actually split up. Um, and that's a sad thing to remember, but it's an all, also um, showing how much, how hard they worked. They worked so very hard. Lots of locals talk about the David Evans department store. 
I think he played a big part in saving stone medallions which adorned the outside before it was demolished. Well, when I was a child, I, I've got so many memories. A uh, child and a teenager of, of um, exploring Swansea Town Centre. And it was a magnificent town. Um, and my, my peer group now, we remember so many things. And it was, you know, some years after the end of World War II, but Swansea was coming back to life. Um, and that included, um, in 1954, where the original David Evans store had stood near Castle Gardens, or Castle Square as we call it now. Um, it had been uh, badly bombed in the, in the war. And so by 1954, they created a new super department store. Uh, I don't, you know, remember it, I was a baby, but um, it, it had all high tech, reinforced concrete so you couldn't see apparently you couldn't see the beams from inside in the ceilings and um, it was absolutely aimed to be a top department store you know I can remember as a child being taken there by my mother to have um, beautiful shoes fitted and, and, and the care and attention from the assistants uh, where your foot was put up on a stool and they were carefully, you know, button and unbutton your shoe and you just felt very special as a small child. They also had adorning the top of the building some prestigious um, stone medallions depicting fashion through the ages, commencing with apparently Eve unadorned, as they called it, um, t right up to the 60s style, although the shop was built in 1954, but s s um, a model, so stone model in a bikini. Very risque, I would say, for that time. But um, obviously, as a, as a child and a teenager go into that store, I don't honestly think, like a lot of people, I didn't look up at the building. And then in latter years, I became so interested in Swansea history and advising people to look up, look at the buildings. If you go down Wine Street for a drink in the, you know, pubs or, or clubs, look up, look up at the architecture. And so the biggest thing was um, by 2006, it was definitely on the cards that David Evans would be dem demolished. Um, and so I took my camera and my 300 millimeter lens and I took photographs of the stone medallions, got in touch with the London developer who was about to demolish the store. And I worked alongside Swansea Council and the Civic Society. And I just pushed and pushed and pushed to make sure that these prestigious artworks were saved. Um, and they were. And uh, the Swansea Museum were very gracious and uh, they're now adorning the walls in the backyard there. How different is Swansea City today compared to the 60s? I'm 25 and I cannot believe how much has changed in my lifetime. I was very fortunate in, in growing up in the 60s in Swansea. I mean, you know, the psychedelic 60s. Um, I love colour, I love colourful clothes and everything. And, and the interior of houses and, and our shop, I mean, living above and behind the shop, um, everything was pretty dark, but everything else around me, um, although I watched television, black and white television, the images on top of the pops and everything was black and white. But my life outside of that, when I would go with my friend uh, from school and we'd go through Swansea, um, there were so many places, so many shops, um, vibrant shops that had been long established and remained established for years, um, all gone now. One of the wonderful, exciting things about living, being brought up in the cafe, was in the shop we had a fanfare jukebox and the, the records, you would, um, the old money, pre decimal obviously, so people would, would play um, a, a record, a 45 record for if they put threepence or sixpence in the slot, and I think it was three plays for a shilling, and uh, after the numbers went out to the top 20, my father would sell the records for some ridiculous price on the counter and people went mad for them. But even though I had that background in the shop, my friend and I would go to the record shops 
or many of the stores, including I think David Evans, um, there was a, a John Menzies um, newsagent type bookshop. Um, so many of them that had record departments and they were sort of like insulated booths that the two of you could go in and have a giggle and listen on headphones to whatever hit there was at the moment. My friends and I, we, we went to the opening of the new top rank because they originally on, on the Kingsway had been the Plaza Cinema and um, when it was uh, you know destroyed um, they pulled it down and they opened a top rank suite which began opening on a Saturday morning and cost 10 shillings to go in and I can remember every single detail the excitement of, of being 13 years of age and going there. And there were powder rooms, you know, for male or female, with mirrors, pink mirrors on the wall, and we never seen anything like it. And I can even, in my memory, because I'm blessed with a, a really good memory, um, remember walking in and, and um, what records were playing, you know, um, Neil Diamond, Sweet Caroline, and uh, The Monkees, and, uh, you know, just absolutely remember all the music of the time. Um, and I believe, you know, Swansea of today, and it's not only me that's saying it, is, is very pale in comparison. I don't know what memories the young people of Swansea today will have in the future. I've got a friend and she's a very youthful 83-year-old and every time I see her, she, she's not in the habit of repeating herself, but the one thing she says, I can't believe Swansea hasn't got a department store. And we not only had David Evans, we had the co-op. And as a child, I was regularly taken there at Christmas time to Santa's Grotto and see Father Christmas. But, um, you know, there are many people of my era who, who remember going to that store. Everything was so vibrant. I experienced a whole range of emotions. But when I was happy, I was vibrantly happy because there was so much colour of that time, so much music and bright colours and lights and everything. I find it interesting how you talk a lot about colour back in the 60s and I think from my perspective and people today often look back at black and white footage of what the 60s used to be like but I find that quite ironic in a way because it was such, well, as you're saying, it was so much brighter back then, brighter clothes, brighter lights and shops and although what we see are black and white images that wasn't necessarily true. When I was talking to you there, and I was thinking, well, technically the roads and the shops were grey. Yes. Um, but whenever there was, if somebody went by in a skirt, you know, mini skirt, it was bright yellow. Yeah. It, it hit you out of all, all that. Yeah. You know, and of course, I mean, people were, even when I started nursing in the 70s, my God, my my wage packet, and it was a wage packet, you know, it, it was... £20 a week or something then. Um, so, you know, in the 60s, people didn't have much money. Um, and, and, and I remember, you know, people expressing then how difficult it was to heat their homes. People didn't heat their homes. They didn't have central heating. We had, um, you know, a, a, a coal, coal fire in, in the cafe with what you called a black lead grate and out would come the small uh, metal bath and I would be bathed in that in front of the fire. Um, and, and the amount of clothing, that I, I was dressed as a small child, I would be dressed in a vest and something called a liberty bodice, which was made out of flannelette or winsiette and then maybe a Winsiette petticoat on top of that. Uh, and then your school dress or tunic, and then um, a scarf, and it's across the front and tied at the back, and then another coat on top of you. Everything was uh, conserving energy and keeping warm, but you, you didn't go and flip a switch and put the central heating on. And now, when you talk about the difference in times, people, so many people are frightened to put the central heating on. How are they going to afford to pay for it? Before I go, Paulette, is there anything else you feel you haven't said that you think I should know about 60s Swansea and that viewers at home would love to know about? I just think I have so many memories, particularly of the 60s in Swansea. And when I think about it, 
even though it wasn't that long after the war and people were, were still experiencing difficult, hard times and wages were low um, and the streets were grey. But even on a wet, windy, dark day, you'd be walking along and you'd be inspired or in the... <laughs> Well, I was going to say inebriated. You'd be you'd be drunk on the excitement of, of what was going on in the shop windows, um, and Swansea to this day has always been linked with music. Um, very talented uh, musicians in its history and its background. Going in record shops, the fact that in the cafe we had our jukebox, which was so popular. Um, in fact, my father used to put up signs in the shop, things like nothing, uh, nothing served on, on toast lunchtime because you'd have maybe somebody, the popular meals there. I mean, just because I, my father was of Italian background and heritage, the food was very basic, home cooked, freshly cooked. My, my father would sit up in the evening, I can see him now and I can hear it, He'd have a couple of buckets and he'd have the potatoes and a bucket of water and he'd peel them all by hand because he was determined that nobody would have any skin or an eye in the chips that my mother would cook the next day. And the chips were absolutely delicious. They were golden, crispy on the outside and, and beautiful, fluffy white potato on the inside. But, you know, he worked hard to achieve that effect. And um, so... But, but in the shop, people would then be eating things like um, egg and chips, so popular. Egg beans and chips, sausage beans and chips. Um, but they would always have a, a background of music. They would select some plays off the, off the jukebox and they were like, the shadows are so popular. And, and many of those particular, as I said, groups we call them, people would beat time to the music with their foot. Um, my father, I don't even know whether it was one of the signs he put up because he had to put up a, a few things like, um, sorry, no thruppy bits for the phone because we had a phone box outside on the pavement and the people were coming in all the time. Could I have you know, thruppy bits for the phone? And my mother and him would be running around working hard. But one day an artist came in and sketched my father and in the background of the sketch, he did these signs. And there it was, no thruppy bits for the phone during lunchtime. But there was also no beating time to the music. And I really don't know whether that was an actual sign or not. It could have been knowing my father, but it's funny when you think about it now. Thank you so much for your time today, Paulette. It's been amazing to hear your memories about what Swansea used to be like. It's been so lovely to hear what Paulette has to say about 60s Swansea and to learn about her Italian heritage. Thank you to Paulette for her time and thank you for watching. I'll be back soon enough with more local history as to me, these stories are too important not to record. Swansea truly is an ugly, lovely town. Mm.